Hello, and welcome back to the Geek on My Sleeve channel. This is Geek Out number 63. We are going to be doing Alarong Kong's new series, God's Eye Awakening, a book, or a labyrinth world novel. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Alarong Kong does another series which is absolutely phenomenal and highly recommended by me. Probably one of my top five, or okay, honestly, one of my top lit RPGs. Uh, he also coins himself as the lit RPG father, and yes, he was there for the beginning, and he just does a phenomenal job. But we're not here to talk about the land we're here to talk about God's Eye, and this is the first book in the series. And yeah, it uh, it was an amazing ride. Um, kind of on the fence whether or not I'll really be talking about or relating some of the Easter eggs or connections from his other series because this is the first in the series. But at the same time, oh man, it just if you know from our Dakota Crowd stuff, it just adds that extra element and really, it's a thing I enjoy from the video game space. I enjoy the Easter eggs. I enjoy the connections throughout it. Yeah, the uh, Easter eggs certainly add another layer to it. Um, it's been a while since I listened to The Land, and we've talked about it before on the channel, where The Land was one of our gateways into Lit RPG, and it's very much um, a lot of what you would consider the traditional um, Lit RPG like it's it, lit RPG genre is very vague and vast, though I guess you can argue that about just about any genre, right? Or subgenre. But this was a very unique take, and there were some Easter eggs, and there were a lot of similarities, and Aleron Kong's humor and jokes definitely came through. Um, or, well, def I guess that, that'd be my one disclaimer for the book. It is definitely a male geared kind of book. Like it is very masculine and I'm I'm trying to describe it without spoiling for some of it there. But anyway, it yeah, it's a very good book, oh. but it definitely gears more towards the male market. Not to say any female wouldn't enjoy it, but uh, a lot of he, he doesn't pull any, yeah, pull any punches, and that's yeah. what I love about him. He's not afraid to curse or. Well, yeah. a lot of times they tell you to write what you know, and uh, from what I know about Alaron Kong, in his background, he really writes what he knows. Um, I think he's around like the Georgia area. He's got an MD background. This character, very much the same um, from Georgia, has a medical background. Like you write what you know. And um, as an adult male, I, I did enjoy some of the crude humor. And it does come from adult male's perspective. And um, oh, yeah. Oh, we, yeah. We, this was like right up my alley. I thoroughly enjoyed it. It just added that much more where, you know, I didn't want it to end and I wanted more from it. But I could see that would, you know, possibly turn a couple of people off. It's not for kids. There are lit RPG books and it is a very um, typically youth friendly genre. This is not for kids. I wouldn't give it to my son to read. Um, but as we've mentioned before, if you're okay with it, I feel it adds a element of realism to it. I mean, like we talked about it with, uh, was it Dungeon Lord? Like when you're about to die or you're up against, um, 
you know, like life when or death your situation. He becomes reality, and you're face to face with a horde of skeletons. Yeah, you're not going to stop it. Be like, oh bother this this gee golly, this is awful. Um, I'm probably going to be dropping a couple f bombs and uh, you know doing what I can to survive, not really worrying about my filter. And yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so we got a teaser of this. Was it end of book eight or end of book yeah. seven of the land? Or end of book end, eight. End of book eight. Okay. You had so much fun theory crafting and dreaming and be like, oh man, like I really would love for it to go this direction. I, now I need that to look listened- back on it. I kind of I wish I posted that video of my theory crafting, but I just didn't get around to it. Mm-hmm. And then I still might just to be like, boy, was I wrong because his teaser is essentially, I guess we might as well start at yep, the beginning. Yep. But spoilers where, ahead. Yeah, spoiler, spoiler warning, spoilers ahead. Um awesome book abort now inside the archives when you come back um yeah so it starts off and essentially earth gets hit with the labyrinth energy and now is part or has become part of the labyrinth you know the whole a labyrinth world novel and what that means is ambient magic or mana is seeping into the world making things stronger and mutating things and everybody gets a hud or heads up display where it's literally a direct correlation to his other book if you craft more on that later anyway so we get this gruff military um medical personnel who essentially sacrifice sacrifices himself to help a couple extra people get to the bunker and we we get to see him die we get to see his you know oh man the the line in there i think it's like ignorance is bliss and i'm glad i didn't just you know have nothingness as it goes and he flies off and then yeah it was so we got to see the humans or the earth get hit more or less with the labyrinth energy or become part of the labyrinth. And that's kind of what I was basing everything off of. But Mm -hmm. wouldn't you know it, it was just a prologue and I should have guessed more based off of the title where, you know, God's eye. And that's what this book is. We get to see from the eyes of the new God. Yeah. Quote, end quote. Well, yeah, yeah. It's, oh man, towards the end there is the best quote that really puts it into perspective where they're like, is a child's finger painting really art? No, but you're going to put it on the wall or you're going to put it on the refrigerator so you don't hurt their feelings. That's what you are. You are currently, you know, child finger painting instead of art. Yeah, yeah. I appreciate the humor there. Um, that was from, uh, I forget what they call them, but it's basically the manifesta- manifestation the, of his god eye himself. Yeah. Um, well, and that's that's one thing that, like, don't get me wrong, in his other series, Uten is, like, I, I keep waiting for the other shoe to drop, and he's very monotone and deadpan, and so now that we've got, you know, that companion element in the form of yourself that mm-hmm. has evolved, and mm-hmm. then there's a lot of cool elements for, like, uh, oh, the Geneva and how Siri, Google, Alexa... Yes. Yes. Combine into a supercomputer that becomes everybody's companion and the best companion. Elon Musk, if you're listening, I uh, I hear you're having some trouble with your giving internet to everybody in the world due to electromagnetization. Mm, shucks, I didn't read that. I am really was I'm, I'm waiting for that uh fiber optic speed satellite internet. 
I, uh, yeah, I didn't read into the article, but I knew about his space Y and giving everybody the internet and his different satellites. Um, but yeah, apparently he's getting some kickback due to just the electromagnetic wave saturation for us. Mm, gosh, this is why we can't have nice things, guys. Um, yeah. So you admit to being a diehard The Land fan. Did the book live up to your your expectations or hope? Or and for The Land, yes. For God's Eye, yes. Like, so one of the things that I always preach about Alaron Kong, and this one was a little different, but in The Land, even if you take all of the lit RPG elements out, He's just mm -hmm. a beautiful storyteller because you have the internal struggle of the character. You have the battle he goes through and then you have the comic relief as well as like the companion and the progression and the world building. And he just mm -hmm. does such a good job bringing it all together. And yeah, it with this one, essentially we follow a gruff Marine who gets picked up for a special organization to go kill people. And his whole persona is Zero Fs, or as we come to know him, Zero Fell. And mm -hmm. it, it lives up to that persona, where in the land, it kind of takes like a more of a, a diehard gamer and, you know, one of the top players and brings him into it. But the guy we're following now isn't a diehard gamer. Yeah, he had the right. glimpse of a little bit of the um, at your world has been added to the labyrinth elements, mm -hmm. but he definitely feels like the character that we were set up and believed to be, as well as like, oh man, it, he is doing something new with the whole premise of this book because... Lit RPG, I typically think, you know, kind of like Sword Art Online, trapped in a video game, you do the world, you know, whatever, whatever. But this adds an extra layer where instead of being a Chaos Seed, you have a Chaos Core, I believe it is. And essentially, it's like a Battle Royale on steroids because there's gods and they take new worlds that are just getting introduced the elements of the labyrinth so everything's you know spiking and growing so you have an even playing field so the difference between the battle royale of the circle getting smaller now it's just like an xp race where now everything's just getting stronger so you gotta get stronger as well as the like it kind of feels like an rts or a real-time strategy like this gave me the the chills of like battle royale and rts so i'm i'm excited it does it does a lot of the elements really well and then oh man at the very beginning, they hint that the key to unlocking, oh, I forget what it is. I think it's something to do with the labyrinth isn't on your world. So you've got to venture to other worlds, hint, hint, nudge, nudge. And then when we get to the end, you know, he's basically just went through a couple portals to get to where he ended up and, you know, just hints at more opportunities. So many points along that little rant there. Um, I believe they mention in the beginning the rule of seven, where there's like 7,777,777 entry, nub, fishy, zero tier level godlings. And We've learned, we learn early on that, uh, what's it? It's not Ramsey, Remy? Or Ram Remy? Remy? Remington. Remington, Remy. Um, he is like born again, reincarnated, whatever you want to say. And he's been selected by a sponsor 
which is pretty rare. Um, there are some other godlings that are not new, as we see at the end. There's some that have been around for, you know, ages upon ages, however you want to measure time. And they're pretty much coming to this world. And so it's a battle royale within battle royales. And oh yeah, battle royale with respawns, as long as you don't suffer the final death and you have your uh chaos core. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So yeah. He we we get we we follow this fishy who has a sponsor where they pretty much blow up stars and you know do all this stuff to cheat quote unquote for this competition and help him basically get all the best achievements unlocked right he is the first to claim an altar he's the first to you know do all this other stuff uh so he he ranks up pretty quick getting that edge pretty quick and well yeah but it also like didn't seem like it at first yes it, it was subtle where essentially i forget the name of the stone but where he opens himself up as a god using his god mm -hmm. as god's eye and he can feel all of the uh prayers or whatever of everybody on telos i want to say everybody on the planet he's about to become of and he gets yeah. kind of overwhelmed with the vindictive malicious intent of everybody and the way he compares it is you know like he's killed before and you know if a serial killer heard what they were saying the serial killer would think that they needed you know a hug so I, I i just I want to get your thoughts on on that moment there because like pretty much at the beginning of this battle royale of the gods uh they're all hanging out and listening to the prayers of these tribes that got thrown onto this new world right mm -hmm. and knowing the land and all the easter eggs and other pieces in there um there were a couple different ones that he reached out to that I was like, oh, wait, like, are we really going to do this? Are we doing this? No, we're not doing this. Are we doing this? No, we're not doing this. So, like, basically, they hear the prayers and you, you can reach out to them and get a feel for them, right? And like you said, yeah. you know, um, serial killer wants to give him a hug, you know, et cetera, et cetera. He has the sponsor's guide who is, you know, pretty much like the opera singer slash supermodel of um fifth element with like giant anime eyes like guiding him along the way to godhood and um you know Are she gives my, him some hints my understanding is that's not his sponsor that's just it's right essentially his sponsor where... yes yes yeah. yes yes um the and then oh man the guide the who's not like, a guide sgs protocol uh apparently Alarong, I know you're building up and you're going to drop it later and we're all going to be like, oh my, that's awesome. But uh, nobody knows what it is. I I, it's okay. I tried to Urban Dictionary it too and I'm like, uh, I don't think this is it. Anyway, um, so first one he reaches out to is pretty much some vampires, right? Yeah. And I'm like, oh, wow, like this could be really interesting, you know, having a tribe of vampires like that feels very different, I guess, than the land, but not so different than the land. And then we go over to hobbits that aren't hobbits, but are actually gnomes with the cannon arms. And that was where I was like, OK, now we've come back full other side of the pendulum i i could this, have sworn that's where we were gonna go because i tagline was right the there with you was you know Gnomes Gnomes rule. rule and i'm sure we're gonna have more with them but you know yeah. that's true they are on this world um but also something interesting to think about if there are seven plus million gods coming to this world and tribes 
that means there's got to be pretty much the equivalent of like more than 7 million potential tribes. And or yeah, because as he was at the end and most of his time was almost up, there were still a lot left. And he as get... well as like our gods can die off or, you know, die, quote unquote, to be reincarnated later unless they suffer the final death. The final death. Oh, there are they. I, it, it's a good book. You definitely have to be in the mood for it. But there were a lot of laugh out loud moments for me. Um, the when it was unreal, too. Yeah, yeah. Die from a cat. Get reincarnated become, as a cat. Yeah. yeah. Um, well played. Well played. Um, and then, yeah, we talked about the humor. His first encounter and how he gets his um, nemesis or whatever. And yeah. the snark that the the game system, that's not a game system, the God Eye system. Um, to where, like, he saves his tribe by playing bait against this eagle bear hybrid yep. and the eagle bear hybrid chases him and he runs up this tree and we truly get to embrace his zero f mentality where um what does he do pete oh man he ge essentially gives it a golden shower and right? uh yeah he he just and that's another aleron kong moment where uh, it's just such poetic justice <laughs> like yes. normally peter I... just described the author articulating a he does better black in... cat giving a eagle bear a golden shower poetic justice lay, he lay does it on a lot feet. better in book eight for i want to say chapter 37 oh, you know about it like that one was just look a at the whole <laughs> <laughs> chapter on one thing that normally I'd be like, eh, okay, life happens. And, you know, I could describe it in a word, but the fact that he is able to take a whole chapter to describe it, like, the, yeah, it, yeah, it, it was beautiful. It was beautiful. But anyway, so it, we, we start off, we've got help from our sponsors and we think, okay, we got this. Uh, and then we literally piss off, you know, an eagle bear. Uh, and then I see what you did there. We're like, okay, our bacon's cooked. You know, we're done for. Um, and then he, you know, it, it all just like works out so subtly and beautifully. Yeah, get up in the tree, take out a couple of the uh, snap tooth simians, which are mm -hmm. essentially, you know, monkeys with snap tooth, where they can, um use their teeth that then break off and they're essentially a syringe without a stopper which mm -hmm. yet again i know alaron has got a medical background so just the beauty of adapting something as simple as a syringe and you know utilizing it with a monkey and creating something new i uh yeah interesting world mm -hmm. and then the whole like forward backwards bit of the very first thing he pulls out of the box and it making no sense. And he's like, well, that was odd. That wasn't destroy a sun worthy, but that was odd. And then like, yeah, yeah, it just all worked out. It, it says something about the scale of what we're playing with. And um, when you think of the scale, just, what we've seen in book one and what pe could potentially see in the future because we learned that like you said his altar is connected to all these other worlds and they hint at it early on we have over seven million people gods here finger painting equivalent gods on this planet but as it accumulates power we could get you know more than finger paintings we could get you know some mosaics or um insert italian old school person um painting you know like the the ogs come in um 
Yeah, and the that's gods where, with like, the capital G, not the lowercase G, small font, sub subtext god that Fell Zero is. And that's where like it allows so much wiggle room because a lot of the gods we have could die. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of them could do very well. Mm-hmm. Some of them might be just barely hanging on. And then, you know, the chaos of the new elements being added. Yes. Yes. So want to get your opinion on this. Um, one of my gripes, and first let me say, like, I love the land. It got me into um, lit RPGs, like one of my first. But I personally feel that Richter in... Um, the land just feels a little bit overpowered to me. Do you do you feel like I'm off base on that? Uh, I feel it's the same thing as with God's Eye. It was the potential, as well okay. as like both of them are strongly indoctrinated in the premise of it's not about power; it's about application of power. And he I'm comes with up you. with some very unconventional, you know, grease into fireball or mm-hmm. flame. Yeah. Combos. So, you, so you don't feel that Richter or um, Zero Fell is overpowered as a as a main character? There, there were outside forces. So okay. okay. I not really because, like, at the beginning with the Eagle Bear, like he was just winging it. And you know, uh, he almost had his bacon. You, there. you know, he was almost done. And uh that's one of the jokes me and my lady always have are oh main character died, story's over. Um uh, but he didn't and then he suffers, you know, several hardships along the way. Like as soon as we get done with the Eagle Bear, we're automatically trying to reconnect with his new tribe and they're under attack. And, you know, we're losing more people. And then, like, yeah, I guess it was more for his tribe. But that's mm-hmm. the whole premise of the book is he's a god and he needs his followers and his followers need him. Absolutely. But, like, Absolutely. we lost two of our three acolytes, And the one that we have left has lost his healing powers because he's essentially come to terms with life sucks and then you die. So I'm going to kill everybody. and. It's so for me that was a big hit. So I I put you on the spot there. I will go out on a limb and say that I feel that Richter from the land qualifies as overpowered. Um, zero fell for this book, not as much. I feel that um, in that sense he's grown a bit as an author, and I still feel he was kind of on the OP scale. But that's not necessarily a bad thing. It just depends on what type of book you want. But I mean, um, like Richter literally dies like chapter three. Uh, 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 did it happen? No spoilers on the land. Peter still wants you to read it. I still want you to read it. Um, <laughs> we warn them anyway that spoilers are fair game on anything we've covered on this channel. It's your own fault. Um, uh, yeah. I'm with you. I, when, oh, uh, the tier three acolyte, the female, um, what's her name? I can't remember. Yeah. Um, when she died, that surprised me because, um, even though this isn't like the same as his party with the land, um, you know, I, I kind of worried that he would have be too afraid with like main character immunity to kill off any of our, our big people. And like you said, by the end of this book, two out of the three acolytes that we learned um, that we got a relationship that the main character kind of got attached to died. Um, And that surprised me like that as a reader, I like that because then I know no one's safe. Like the danger is real. I get tired of the main character immunity where I'm listening to a book or I'm reading a book and I'm like, Oh, like our main Mary band, they're not going to die. 
oh, this new guy that we got, oh, it just got introduced last chapter. Yeah, like he's wearing a red shirt. We might lose him, but everyone else, no, no, not going to happen. And I'll admit going into this, um, I thought Alaron Khan wouldn't do it, but he did it. And our last guy, uh, I think the chapter title was something creating a monster or whatever. So like his last acolyte is now, um, like you said, loses his healing abilities. Um, and yeah, yeah, I do enjoy, I did enjoy the um, kind of references he made to how like his godhood, the foundation was getting set up, like the early legends and how like those will get told differently and kind of like build Zero Fell's fame. Um, that was kind of fun. And I also really appreciated getting oh. the perspective of a couple of the other gods in this first book as well, just to kind of see the differences. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, he, he did it well, because, like, he, you understand that he, he doesn't see himself yet, or he doesn't believe himself to be a god, and mm -hmm. he's just being an average show and kind of playing inside the rules of it, and he plays through like okay when he's losing his acolytes are losing faith and more people are dying and they're like why are we even following you anyway we could have stayed at all these other places in reality like you know it's right but he goes through like i can use fear i can you know make an example of people i can do all this other stuff but then he very much is like you know kind of back to the land thing for how we'll meet it together kind of deal or yeah. there there are a lot of those similar themes um between the land and god's eye which i appreciate a lot of good quotes good takeaways um but we got to see kind of the the polar opposite with the Oh, the god of the ogre at the end, right? Where he yeah. straight up slaughtered one of his followers, minions, etc. Um, like oh, right out the how, gate to establish dominance. There's just something about ripping out someone's heart and eating it that you know sets a precedence. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's commitment right there. Uh, but you know, but everybody's also got their own taste. that's where like. Oh, uh, Sariel warned him about pissing off a Pantheon member, and we did it twice. We did we killed do it twice? The ogre god, and then the eagle bear ate his soul, where he suffered the final death. So they have to know. But they're only a half star Pantheon. Well, but you know, there's a difference between. Yeah, you know, yeah. 1v1 versus, you know, 1v4. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's where at the end where they're like, oh, yeah. And here's oh, I forget the number because I remember the number is some was funky. It's either numbers present number six or present number seven. OK, because he was counting the items in the box and he's like, there's only five here. How do they oh, get seven? Oh, I think it was speaking six, to her. Is but... six. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. So we we have a little more help coming, which I'm assuming is in regards to, hey, you passed the test, you can now join our pantheon. Mm hmm. That would be nice. And then he also has some potential allies with the gods that he freed, right? What was it? The um, yeah, the elf yeah, god, the whole altar thing. Mm hmm. So that is kind of interesting as well, um, which that kind of throws off the rule of seven then, um, because I guess that means that there might have been pre-existing gods there, and then they add all these other ones when they're connected. Well, so and maybe... that's where at the beginning it talks about how Earth is mana tarted or however she says it right and you know essentially grew up cross-eyed <laughs> and bow-legged from the get-go but then the world that we're on um 
never got that low. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. And then the whole vision of the final encounter there, mm-hmm. as well as, like, yeah, it, I think it could have also had to do with, like, the artifacts. And part of me is, like, most Battle Royales play the same map. So, yes and no. But, yeah. Yeah. Messes with our, our beautiful little scripture. Oh, man, that line for, like, when Fell is like, oh, yeah, you know, at any given time, it seems like people have a 50-50 chance. And sorry, I was like, 42. And I'm like, wait, what? what? Yep. No, it's been definitively answered. <laughs> they have a 42% chance. Got to appreciate those those little nods. Yeah, yeah. The answer is 42 the odds are not in your favor. Um, yep. Go forth and constant or uh, conquer our little finger paint godling. Um, and then yeah. there, there's just like so much potential as well as like we got to see only a handful of possible things where like, you know, crazy monsters like the eagle bear. Then we got attacked by the dwarves and it wasn't even their whole mm-hmm. force. And then we recruited the eagle bears and mm-hmm. ended up fighting the spider people, monster, not monster things. And we got to see that that god had already found a location and was starting to, you know, do his stuff. Build his altar. Yeah. And then, oh. The this, this simple thing of the berries where, <laughs> yeah. Tell tell us more. Oh, you know, they're foraging. And uh, I, Alarong didn't spend as much time really fleshing it out, but it was. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, but again, I some some authors will want to just give you the fun and interesting things like you don't need to know about these details uh, well, but, but it, it, adds... it sets it up to where like i don't know i guess maybe i'm a believer but it's it could be plausible you know someone sure. comes comes from someplace else and you know pulls a Arnold Schwarzenegger and is like, you know, come with me if you want to live. And then, oh wait, now is that get on the, get to the chopper? Uh, anyway, he's got a lot of good lines. Pulls, pulls an Arnold Schwarzenegger, saves their bacon, and then has to spend time secluded, you know, building his power, mm-hmm. Using souls to further his progression, and so they're not in the public eye, so to speak. And then you know, time passes, or wink, wink, they go to the other worlds to try to find the key to their world because you don't put the key and the lock in the same location, you just don't do it. So, yeah, it's it's going to be interesting. A lot, a lot of potential there. Yeah. Um, so, if you had to choose, God Eye Book Two or The Land Book Nine, what would you want him working on next? I, you know, Book Eight was good, but it was almost like a fresh start. And trying not to spoil things, <laughs> the end of six in my mind is the origin of God's Eye. So for six to end up at nine, that is two to three more books mm. from God's Eye which would equate, but it doesn't matter because it's a labyrinth and it, you know, uses time and space as its chew toy or eats time and space for breakfast. So that's not really a logical connection. Yeah. I 
I'm going to have to go back and listen to book six because it's been a minute of the land. Though if I had to pick one or the other, I would like to see more of God's eye. Um, I enjoy the land, but currently where we're at in it, it's kind of lost a bit of its spark for me. Um, but still a good series, and I still want to see where we go with it. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the way it left off, like, there's a lot of potential for potentially more people from Earth. Mm -hmm. from other causal connections from more things that he expands on and i am sorry i'm going to say something in relation to the land you can plug your ears so when richter picks up the traveler's map mm -hmm. and there is the quest as he's zooming out and there's an island that has a unfulfilled quest and we get that whole comic relief of, oh, a quest on a treasure map. Uh, yes, please. And that those monsters would probably use, yeah, him or his mm -hmm. balls as Juju Beat. I'm curious if Is there's there any connection? causal connection, but none of that matters because we have our own dungeon. I didn't say it. You didn't hear it. All right, you can turn your stuff back on. Uh, um, yeah. Now that I've gone through God's Eye, it would be fun to go back and listen to the land again to see what other little references and nods um, towards the other series. Um, maybe if Peter gets the time he wants, he can go down that rabbit hole and oh man, you know, there, there are watch, so many good watch ones for content. Every book starts with either the light court or the dark court, but then I'm I'm sorry yet again. Please still read the land. Um, when we kill He Man and we suck out his memories, and then we get trapped in chaos stuff mm -hmm. yeah I, yeah 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 stuff happens the multiverse but, but that's where like what we perceive as good and evil don't match up inside the land bit where you know we realize i'm I'm it, not it's done. going. It's done. I, I Go can't. Ahead. I, Go ahead. I don't. Oh, we'll, it's, we'll throw like, we'll throw disclaimers um, in the description. Sorry, guys. You've been warned. Um, so, we'll, ahead. Let's hear it. Book one, the intro or prologue. It is the dark court that's talking like, hey, I brought more chaos seeds and that's going to be able to break the lock. So it's a dark that brings Richter and he uses Z tricks as a facilitator. And, but at the same time, when the He Man incident happens, he talks to the Lords of Chaos. So, no, they're not gods, but who we're talking to throughout book, the beginning of God's Eye, it's as if it's the Chaos, the Chaos people. So, stuff happening there as well as with one of the light court things i remember it's essentially a massive trophy room where he goes and he's got you know oh something that is supposed to be a phoenix which used to be the core of a planet and now where that planet used to be is rubble as well as the light court guy is contemplating his um call to kill off the pixie race which you know that's not a good thing to do but it yeah it it brings in a lot of different perspectives yeah and um the fifth element anime eye chick in the beginning mm -hmm. uh she talks a bit about that like good versus evil and how like a lot of it just comes down to perspective and what one race being tribe 
would contemplate as good is different than another one and that um at the end of the day it's all a matter of perspective and which which part of the hill you're standing on looking over um yeah yeah and then now since we're going full spoiler so the end of six is literally we defeat the orc horde we uh, nullify the troll mercenaries and we touch the orb of chaos which ushers in instead of the age of banished gods we usher in the age of chaos and you know that giant light that Mm. nobody ends up finding that just shoots off into the abyss where we're like and it's gone uh yeah that's totally the origin for this book sorry not sorry um uh, I and that's why makes sense. end of six and then so the beginning of seven is you know a lot of the dungeon stuff and the other lich stuff so then we have end of six is the origin of god's eye in my mind and then we've got or well so yeah it it could be forward it could be backwards it could be that beam that started this whole thing it could be uh, that they've gained more power to influence other yeah anyway i i need to update or look back at my theory crafting that i've done yes before this book came out but yeah yes. there there are just so many beautiful causal connections and it says of the labyrinth which is not a chaos seed saga but in 7 we do end up getting into the labyrinth or understanding what potentially the labyrinth could be. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I could see it. I haven't been following it real close. I don't know if he's officially said that there's overlap, but there's enough nods and subtle hints in both to make you think, yes. Yes, enough references. Um, so, yeah. Well, and I mean, like, even in book one, where Richter is talking to Zetrix and he talks about marks, and he's like, oh, yeah, those wouldn't have been in the game that you played, um, as well as what happened to all those people who were in the game when they got hit with uh, the beam of chaos and got entered into the labyrinth Mm. just saying in addition when we find out where richter ends up it was a planned expansion but was not an expansion but then in reality they say it was modeled off the land not a direct connection to the land but then how does richter thrice heard and witness his way into obliterating his body and transporting his soul to the land. Just saying. Um, The questions and more questions. Find out more on the Geek On My Sleeve channel as Peter takes a deeper dive into the world of Alarong Kong and all the Easter eggs and theory crafting and oh my goodness if he hasn't convinced you to pick up and listen to these books you will you're welcome and so that's where yeah there there are a lot of potential causal connections yeah for for the sake of time though um let's talk more god's eye yeah. the likes the dislikes um the pacing of this book for me, he did really well in. Um, like th- earlier in the books in the land series, like I really enjoyed, um, you know, like I felt like we got a little bit of everything in one book. Um, later ones, not as much. They they kind of go in different directions, but we're not talking about the land right now. We're talking about God's Eye. For me we got to see just enough 
of the world, of the story, of the different elements that go into this new series, which, like, yes, thank you, Alaron Kong. We got the prologue where, you know, his first life, um, get to see some of the video game mechanics, get to see what being connected to Labyrinth is like, and have kind of like his reflections there about everything that goes on when a Labyrinth connects to the world. And then we get to see him reborn. We get to see the overall God making, creating, starting process. And then we get to see this new world with newly connected to the Labyrinth and like the, the levels of the beings start to scale up and the creatures start to grow and become like mana enriched and just like everything there and got to see him kind of traverse the world before they get to the portal and the other different kind of like foreshadowing of future elements like we have giants we have dwarves we have berries that make you you know coat your pants we have um like all sorts of different goodies we have the gods that Spider pick more King. yeah yeah like they're not all humanoids he picked like I'm, they... I'm curious and excited to see the race variances as well as like he's royally ticked off the guy who was in charge of the dwarves and mm -hmm. he you know just as same royally ticked off the guy in charge of the spiders uh not to mention he just had a worldwide announcement of um yeah, painting a target on his back yeah and then pissed off hey, a pantheon member hey yeah, like, seven he's... million other gods um here's daddy's name uh here's where i'm at um i have goodies come come at me bros come at me like that's that's well, where we leave I, the end of the book. That's not even like that's just the gods, but that doesn't even bring into account like that's the just very the ending tier zero of gods. The you know T Rex that was knocking at his door mm, or yes. whatever. The like yes, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's going to get good. But um, we also have a couple power plays in our back pocket, which that was one thing I was at the beginning. I was a little disappointed. I was like, you've got this new ability. Do it. Let's see it. Let's go. And then he saved it for, you know, when his feet were to the fire and he mm -hmm. executed and yeah, it, it all came through. But we can literally create life with this altar so we can regen some of our recoup, some of our losses there. We do have the builder trait, so we have a lot of potential there. We have the boons for the free free resources. Did to... they say, or do you think he can bring back his accolades? Or they um, did say, and no, not at his power level now. So, but eventually... our archer is a soul or is whatever that gets put into the sea of souls. He's a pretty high and, tier soul too. Yeah. But who's to say that we didn't make enough an impact on our acolytes life for them to get thrown in and, you know, for them to come back and work for the enemy and then to have this like, Oh, Spider-Man love embrace as everybody dies around us. Yeah. Or, or you know, they're dead. They're, that could be a thing, too. Uh, but are they really? I don't know. Um, I I could see that being one of the driving forces for the third accolade, because he, the, the head accolade, awful with names, the female, like, mm -hmm. he was in love with her, which yeah. is why he, he took his, you know... Um, the route he went where he gave up his healing ability because he's like, man, you know, um, et cetera, et cetera. Didn't save her. The only way to protect is to kill them first kind of deal. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I could see that being an interesting subplot in the future books where, you know, fell oh, yeah, zero in the land. needs to increase his power. So now he has this accolade who's very driven to help him um obtain everything he needs 
and a big part of like how he can grow in power is to send out his his tribe his minions to spread the word of fell zero well and that's Um, where i feel it's kind of cool watching the origin of it all because mm -hmm. the female was pretty much like you know he's dealing with such volumes of power and all this extra yes, you know yes like you don't even know and mm-hmm. now our new head acolyte is the like, only acolyte or yeah the only one currently has the mindset of you know might makes right so that's gonna kind of steer is following more so in that direction not to mention we just picked up a death bone archer Yes. Who, you know, was properly nerfed, but at the same time as a arsenal of bodies where he can make his new arrows given enough time as long yes. as all the dinos didn't eat them and walk off with them. Yes, yes. Potentials. I'm I'm really enjoying the series. I see the potential as well. Um and I definitely see the growth of Alaron Kong in this book as a writer compared to the starting of the land that we listened to, gosh, like four years ago, five years ago. He's been pumping them out. Yeah. He's, yeah. he's been on it. Yeah. For an indie author, he's done very well for himself um, and the land as well. Uh, there's a reason why it's got so many amazing reviews. Um, yeah. What about what else about God's Eye? Do you want to get into this geek out before we start rapping and talking about uh, the next lit RPG we're going to do? Mm, I didn't have that together. Uh, um, so God's Eye, like the ending was satisfying. It mm-hmm. concludes the battle at hand as well as giving us a bunch of what ifs and potential power grabs. Um, It took us quite a while to get to our lovable companion, but that's okay. And I'm thoroughly like that was one of the elements in the land where I enjoyed it. But at the same time, I'm still like waiting for the other shoe to drop where mm-hmm. Futin it is monotone. And then we get the oh man, I know his name. The British version of himself, the manifestation or, of the God's no, Eye. The Undine, the water elemental, Bound Chicka Bow Bow with the King. Mm-hmm. From from the land. It's been too long. Sorry. Oh, man. Anyway. He'll come back to you. He always says his name short to bug him. Randy? Randy. Randolphus. Randolphinian. That guy kind of fills the void a bit there. But in this one, you know, we finally got our you know, super AI floating or not AI, a piece of my soul that has, you know, became our administrator. Into its own, yeah, being keep 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 everything moving and working. Yeah, yeah. As uh, Fell Zero argues with himself. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Good times. Good times. Um, well, because. It's one of those, like, his sponsors can no longer help him. And in the land, he had his mother, not his mother, his Hisako Kong? Hisako? Mm-hmm. I'm going to go with that. I sure. I butchered it. But, yeah, the uh, sprite leader or master of the... Place of Power? Know, yeah. Hearth Tree? Yeah, Hearth Tree. Uh, I got you. And, you know, we don't have that mentor figure here because he's got to be the all-powerful god. So, yeah, it's it's a good way to add in the punchline because there wasn't... Eh, okay, okay, there was quite a few, but it was a little more on the crude humor side of things. Uh, He didn't hold back as much in this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he's established, and... Sure. Yeah, people... Can't get enough. 
Wow. Uh, like a lot of authors, acquired taste. Um, and I can respect an author that just steps up and owns it. Um, and, and you definitely get a feel for that in God's oh, eye. Yeah. Politically correct as a place in space and time. But as we establish, uh, the labyrinth eats time and space for breakfast. So hats off. Yummy. Yep. Yummy, yummy, yummy. So, uh, we're, we're trying to help Pete get his lit RPG fix. This one was uh, God's Eye by Alaron Kong, new series of one of his favorite authors. Next week, we are doing, yes, Ascend Online, Glory to the Brave by Luke Chimilenko. This is another series that got us into it um into the lit rpg sun or sub genre and yes oh my goodness yes ascend online um of of the two like you know you love all your your children equally but um this one is definitely up there for me um on ascend online yeah the audiobook's been out forever is... but go ahead this one is up there, but it plays in a different space. Like, mm -hmm. you know, spoiler-free attempt at what, why you guys need to read this and love it and you're welcome is it is a lit RPG, but they don't get stuck. It does a good job adding science and keeping people in a coma-like state without having muscle atrophy and bed sores, as well as being able to, you know, download skills into their brain, as well as it has some very cool, unique game elements. But then they come back to the real world, and it's, yeah, it involves things and is quite exciting in the, I guess, you know, streaming space, so to speak. Um, yeah, does very well with the organic growth and organic world elements, as well as like keeping things hidden. But this is Ascend Online book four. So you have three others in the way. It took a while to get to book four, as well as four has kind of a different flavor because at the end of three, we kind of, I, I think of it like uh, Naruto, where we conclude an arc and we're in the same world, but we're just onto the second arc. That's yeah. a great way of putting it. Um, and I agree with you. New, new phase of the game, game of life, lit RPG, genre, ascend online. Um, it's actually one of our earlier geek outs too. Gosh, like I need to look that up, but it's been nearly 50 geek outs since, uh, we did a send online book three. All that. Um, and we haven't even gone through all the land ones, but that's cause uh, we, yeah, yeah. Please support us so we can do geek outs like every other day instead of once a week with you guys and just talk about all these amazing books. Uh, links to help support this passion project down below. And yes, 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 yes. Hope to see you guys next week, 5 p.m. Eastern. Bye. Bye.